is this so dark? Okay, thanks. All right. Why well, we won? We actually successfully took over the big data world, and uh, this is a talk about why. So, yeah, we rock. So, I started doing Hadoop consulting in 2011, and immediately started trolling the community because it sucked. Basically, the the APIs were terrible. So, uh, three years ago, here, uh, it, actually at the Microsoft facility, I did this talk, Why Big Data Needs to be Functional, where I bemoaned my state and said we should be doing functional programming and we should be using languages like Scala. Uh, that was, you know, March 9th, 2012. And I made this claim, which is rocketed around the inter interwebs, that uh, Hadoop is the enterprise <laughs> Java beans of our time. Uh, to be fair, maybe it's better to say that MapReduce is, but you know, you might as well go big or go home, I suppose. <laughs> so, but anyway, this is my claim. And really the problem was MapReduce. It, uh, you know, it, it, to be fair, it did the job for a lot of people. It, you know, it made Cloudera guys, or it might make them rich, who knows. Anyway, um, so, you know, it let people get work done at massive scale, especially, you know, when you're talking, you know, hundreds of terabytes of data. But it was really limited. It was basically flat map reduced for starters. You just get these two steps where you input data and do some initial mapping and output key value pairs and then, you know, shuffle them together if, to do the final reduction. And if that sounds like it can do everything you want it to do, then uh, you're pretty, you're smarter than I am. Let's just put it that way. Because it turns out it was, uh, you know, had a lot of problems. One, it was extremely inefficient. Uh, there was a lot of uh, overhead where data would be flushed to disk instead of cached for the next stage in the pipeline and stuff like this. Uh, it was never designed to do anything other than batch mode analysis where I have a bunch of data on disk and I'm just going to, you know, in mass read it all into memory and or stream it through or something and process it. Whereas today, increasingly, people want to do event stream processing. You know, they don't want to wait six hours for their edits to the, their web pages to show up in the Google searches. They want to see it as, you know, minutes maybe. So it actually becomes, you know, time to money, if you will. If I can throw in a little marketing buzzword. But maybe the worst problem for us as developers is that it was just hard to implement algorithms. Um, uh, it's a very limited programming model and a lot of things don't fit it very well, like if you're doing iterative algorithms like training machine learning models, uh, walking graphs. I mean, almost everything in the internet is supposed to be a graph, right? All these social networks and yet it's hard to represent and uh, things as graphs and work with them in that way. And the API was particularly heinous. Uh, in that talk, I, I showed you uh, examples of it. I won't do that now for time. and, and uh, because you know, I want you guys not to lose your lunch. But uh, fortunately, even then, there was uh, you know hope on the horizon. Uh, Twitter had started writing this uh, API called Scalding in Scala, that provided a lot of the same collection APIs that we're used to. So you could do flat map and map and reduce and all this stuff. And it sat on top of a pretty nice Java API called Cascading. It was still noisy pre-Java 8 Java, but at least it gave you idioms of data flows and, you know, setting up in sources and sinks and, you know, doing a pipeline of steps between them. And all of that was, you know, hiding most of the ugliness of MapReduce. So that was a big step. It didn't address the problem of, uh, you know, fast streaming of data. Uh, it could only do MapReduce sort of stuff. So Twitter uh, realized there was a lot of sort of duplicate logic they were writing for their streaming jobs in Storm and their uh, MapReduce jobs, so they came up with this other layer API called Summingbird that uh, tried to give you reuse across those different things. And that only went so far though, and it still didn't fix the performance problems of MapReduce. Um, and it there, and also doesn't scale down very well. This is a problem with for developers working with MapReduce, you had to have like a mini cluster of sorts running on your laptop just to test your damn code. Uh, I mean, there were ways they tried to work around it, but it had no real sense of running outside of Hadoop. So, you know, you couldn't just, you know, run it like you would run a normal Java or Scala process. Well, to cut to the more recent times, uh, in around 2013, Cloudera, the biggest Hadoop vendor, recognized, look, MapReduce has kind of reached the end of its life. Let's pick something new that could replace it. There was already this open source Berkeley research project called Spark that it coincidentally had started right about the same time Hadoop went mainstream in 2008-2009 uh, and it solved all these problems. Now to be fair, especially if you're th about to run out and deploy Spark in production, you know it's not as battle hardened as MapReduce is, so you know always uh, trust but verify, you know, that old Russian proverb that uh, Reagan used to like to quote. 
which I don't know in Russian, but nevertheless he would say in English. Um, but it gives us a couple of very important things. It solves all these problems, but maybe crucially, it has the right abstractions under the hood upon which you can build other things. And so one of those, or two of those other things actually are uh, not only just this core API for doing like batch mode processing, but an extension where you can shrink it down to do many batches. This gets you close to real time processing, but you know, the sort of 90-10 solution. It can't do single event processing, but if it's okay to just capture, say, windows of 10 seconds of events and then process them like batches, you know, that solves a lot of problems right there for, that people have. And they've layered on top of this uh, SQL semantics so that you can write queries when that makes sense. So, I'll, you know, no, no talk should be without code, so let's actually quickly go through a very simple example. And this is actually a complete example. It's, you know, I've uh, leaded a few details, but this would actually work in production if you wanted to use it. You know, where we start with, you know, creating the entry point, a Spark context, and then layer on top of that a SQL context and a streaming context. This is the Spark way of doing things. Um, uh, they have this, this is kind of a bit idiomatic scholar, they have you import the members of uh, the SQL uh, object, SQL context object, but that's just their choice, I don't know, it's kind of strange. Anyway, uh, and you typically use case classes to represent um, your schema with the problem that they're limited to 22 fields, and because this is still in Scala 2.10, but you know, there's, you use, just use nested types to work around it. But anyway, so the, the, the uh, data set here is actually, uh, it was inspired by a real data set you can download, which is the records of all flights that have happened uh, between, I think it's North American airports for the last 15 years or so. It's actually kind of fun to play with because it has all the flights that were delayed and canceled and reasons and all that. And it's actually shocking how many flights are canceled when you look at this data. Those of you that fly a lot like me probably shouldn't be surprised, but it, I was surprised. Anyway, so that's what I'm gonna use for schema. And uh, so I'm going to, uh, in this case, I'm going to stream this data. I'm going to imagine that this is actually coming in in real time, and I just want to be uh, keeping running statistics of what's going on in the air. So I'm going to open up a socket and, you know, listen to this data coming in from some server, and then I'm going to iterate over it, and uh, I have a little idiomatic way that I like to parse the data. Let's say it's just coming in as raw text, and I'm going to parse it into these objects. Um, not, not a big deal of how that's done, but the, here's the crucial bit that every time one of those batches arrives, you know, like the, the window of 10 seconds passes or whatever, I can just start doing all kinds of crap to that, whatever I want to do to that analysis. In this case, I just did a, a, a SQL query where I'm going to do a group by statement, which, you know, for things like group by and joins, it's really hard to beat SQL for concision. Now, I should say that's, you know, that immediately you should say, oh my gosh, you've got something that isn't checked at compile time, and that's true. There's a way to get around that problem. But nevertheless, the point being that when you have the right abstractions, you can layer on top uh, all kinds of different tools, and, and, and some of those are now including machine learning libraries and graph algorithms, to, you know, to do whatever job you have to do. Do it streaming if you have to. Um, uh, do it with SQL if that's what works for your data analysts, et cetera. And then you just start it running and tell it to stop when it finishes, which could be never. It might run forever. Well, it turns out this has taken the world by storm. You know, we basically won this battle. I feel vindicated. And I take the, cr the credit. Why not? Um, sometimes trolling works. Um, but you know why? Why does it work? Well, we get these amazing DSLs. I, I cannot think of any way to make this more concise to express a calculation. This is actually doing the inverted index, but we won't go into that. The only thing I could think of that would make this less noisy is to remove the case keywords. But of course, you know, they're there for pattern matching, so I don't want to do that. But it's just incredible how it just gets out of your way and lets you focus on the problem. We have this rich ecosystem of all of these tools, including legacy tools we've had, like the JVM, like our IDEs, and, and so forth, and even Hadoop, which we continue to le uh, leverage. We've got some great math libraries. We heard two fantastic talks today already about Spire. Uh, Algebra is another uh, Twitter library for doing like monoids at scale and stuff like that. Um, Helen has done some amazing work integrating Cassandra and Spark and Kafka. She's got this really cool uh, demo app called Killer Weather without an E after the K-I-L-L. -L. Uh, you might want to check out that shows how to nicely integrate Cassandra as a data repository, Spark as your processing engine, and Kafka as a, a, a source and sync of data. 
And Kafka itself, which is uh, one of the other hot tools that everyone is starting to use now, it's a, it's a message queue at scale invented at LinkedIn, and it's also written in Scala. So under 10 minutes, that's my story. That's why we won. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. okay, time for a few questions. Questions? Answers? Questions? Answers? Quick question. Yeah. So when you say uh, Spark is taken well by Storm, how does Storm fit in this? Uh, Storm is interesting. Um, there's, you really need Storm if you actually want to do individual event handling. Uh, the, 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 the problem Storm is going to face going forward is that people love to buy one tool that does it all, even if it sucks at any one thing it does. My favorite example of this is Microsoft Office. Uh, because, and I, I'm serious about this. I've been around a little while. And uh, I remember when, before Office came out, you went to buy, you know, like Harvard Graphics was the presentation tool and WordPerfect. I, I know I'm sending some of you back on memory lane here. But all these different tools that were all great, but you had to buy a bunch of different tools that didn't work together at all. Then Microsoft came out with one thing to buy. It sucked, but people just wanted one thing, so they bought it and threw the other guys out of business. So I actually think people are going to use Spark, even if it's not the best tool, because it's kind of one tool to fit everything. But, uh, but Storm is still the best tool for those individual event processing problems. But then you also get this problem of code reuse that Summingbird tries to solve. Of I don't want to write duplicate logic that's going to be streaming in, in batch mode and so forth. Um, anybody else? Yeah. Spark SQL and... Yeah, so not only do you get one shop, one-stop one shopping, but you get integration between the tools. So that, I think that's really crucial. Anyone, was there another one somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, I think in my example, I just dumped to the console. I don't even remember now. Um, but yeah, normally you would write to a message queue, write to Cassandra, write to the file system. Uh, there's all kinds of, sp basically Spark uses the Hadoop uh, I.O. layer, if you will. So you, anything you can do with MapReduce, you can do with Spark and as far as where you're going to send output. Or like Mark said, send it into some other jobs, like stream it to another process that's going to do you know, uh, more heavyweight analytics or whatever. So. Yeah. Uh, where can I find the killer weather presentation? Uh, Google it and you'll find it on GitHub. It's K-I-L-L-R and then weather. All one word, yeah. Or talk to Helena over here and she'd be happy to tell you about it. <laughs> Anybody else back there? Yeah, right, so uh, yeah, Aka plus Aka streaming and Aka clustering would be a fantastic streaming tool and ha that has not escaped our notice. Let me just put it that way. And I'll, that's all I'll say right now. But you can read that. You can read that for what you want for what TypeSafe might do. But we're thinking about how all these could fit together. Uh, just, just one last comment I wanted to make. Shameless plug. My uh, programming Scala book is half off at O'Reilly today. If you want to, you know, the ebook anyway, twenty bucks. Can't go wrong. Baby needs new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> right, maybe I'll stop. Thanks. Um, it's called Programming Scala, Second Edition.